डॉक्टर रजत मुना डॉक्टर अनिल राजवंशी डॉक्टर नलिनी निमकर डॉक्टर हेमंत दरबारी एंड फ्रेंड्स यू नो मेरा एंटर्ड सी डैक टुडे आई वॉज एंटरिंग आफ्टर लॉन्ग नंबर ऑफ इयर्स आई सडनली रियलाइज आई वॉज सो नियर बट यट सो फार इट लुक लाइक यू नो एंड माई माइंड वेंट बैक टू लेट एटीज In fact, Sidak was born, as you know, when we had a discussion in Science Advisory Committee to the Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi's time, when he asked us, uh, "We are a poor country, but we must be good at something. What is it?" And I remember Rodham Narasimha saying, "We are good at this," and he said, "What do you do with it for the country?" And that is where the idea of Sidak was born. and an instinctive prime minister gave 10 million dollars 3 years and vijay bhatkar and the rest of it is a history and the country is so proud of this institution and i was very deeply associated in early years not only as a member of your board but also chairing several committees including selection and a whole range of things and you have really done the country proud in terms of what you have and we keep on mentioning about the heroics of cdac in terms of denial driven innovation if you like all right innovation arises as a result of several things but denial driven innovation and we demonstrated what we could uh, basically do so it was uh, great to re enter reimagine rethink those uh, early days so thank you very much for holding the function here to start with secondly uh, anil when he mentioned to me about uh, the release of this book it didn't take me a second to say yes because uh, is one of the rare individuals who has demonstrated to us what can be done they are not just given lectures like some of us do it takes guts you are a iit kanpur graduate a premium product you do your phd in florida and you come back in a village how many of us can do that and then he has stuck around basically and committed himself to his dream of uh, rural india coming true you know i always say that uh, as far as individual circumstances institutions are concerned nations are concerned there are three things that matter the first is passion you always talk about that passion is junoon that's the word that you use right we must have that the second is innovation you remember i always say in my public speeches i in india must stand for innovation not for imitation not for inhibition right india must become an innovation nation i was just in europe a couple of weeks ago uh, they call themselves a innovation union not european union by the way all right because innovation is the way forward not only for growth for competitiveness for inclusion a whole range of things so innovation is key but the most important part is compassion compassion in the heart and anil the reason i admire you most is that this combination of innovation compassion and passion in the way i have seen you in you i have not seen in many individuals because if that compassion was not there you wouldn't be in the setting that you are so i must congratulate both of you first of all you for persuading him to basically come back but you as a uh, you know a, a, a remarkable couple Uh, struggling it out the book and i have to show this because this is a e e book <laughs> the book uh, by the way is uh, 94 pages very easily readable and uh, actually i remember after it came i read it in one flight end to end whenever i release a book i read uh, end to end by the way and this was very easy 94 pages was not very difficult sometimes you release books which are 300 500 
pages. <laughs> but as a religion, I basically do it. And it's a fantastic book because it is not about, uh, you know, Anil's having uh, developed uh, Nuri or a Lansto, etc., etc. The products are visible. But the processes, what went behind it, all right, I think makes a very compelling story. And therefore, I'm very glad that you have talked about the human interest part in this uh, particular book. While uh, going through the book, there are a number of things uh, that uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, hit me hard. One of them was how hard it must have been not only to do frugal innovation, but do it under the conditions that you did. Frugal innovation, we also done. I mean, I remember I decided not to go abroad and study in India, do my PhD with Professor M.M. Sharma. I was first class first and I had some five fellowships abroad, but I looked at Professor M.M. Sharma, you know, the first fellow of Royal Society in Engineering, by the way, in 350 years, as you know, and decided to work under him. He was just 28 at that time, you know. Of course, at that age, I mean, at that time, you can become, you could become a professor at the age of 28, by the way. I mean, those days are gone now. That's a different matter. And he proved that, uh, right. And I remember it was a frugal innovation to the core when I was doing my PhD. Our uh, 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 contingency was rupees 10,000, by the way, for an year. And we did research in that. But we did that research in Bombay, not in Fulton. And therefore, we didn't have to come to Pune to make a phone call. You, you get the point. So what I admire very much is uh, your guts, your determination, uh, your uh, willingness to struggle, not give up, etc. I think these are qualities that uh, we should all emulate. And I really admire. And that comes through the book, by the way. Equally interesting, you will find, and uh, many of us will realize it who have worked in the government, about the challenges that you had, which were as tough while dealing with government, government officials, government regulations, uh, uh, bureaucrats, people who just didn't understand, uh, would put not only speed brakes, but be negative. And despite that, you're not losing your enthusiasm. It makes a very interesting uh, story. I mean, he, you will find in the book, he says, I wrote a letter to Prime Minister. Prime Minister got excited, but when it went to the department, they say, why the hell did you write to the Prime Minister? And his, his project didn't move through. You, 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 you get the point. And despite all these, one has... Uh, uh, moved forward, I think that's tremendous. I also like uh, in the book this particular description of what I have started calling as affordable excellence. Now, you would say, come on, you are giving a contradiction in terms. Because what is affordable can't be excellent. What is excellent can't be affordable. No, that is not true. Okay, I just gave an IIT Bombay convocation address uh, uh, on the 9th of August titled Affordable Excellence and how you can actually um, uh, achieve it. So it is about making high technology work for the poor. And that has been all your emphasis all along. Making high technology work for the rich, very easy. Making low technology work for the poor, very easy. Making high technology work for the poor is the biggest challenge. How do you do that? And your book reflects on that. You know, there is a, 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 a couple of pages which you will read, which are so thrilling, where he picks up some ideas from space, certain materials that have been used in space. And you want to use that in developing something for a rural uh, application, you know? That thinking is extremely critical. How do we make high technology work for the poor? I uh, would like to cite an example, because you are all high technology guys, and uh, you would be non-believers in this particular concept. So let me explain that to you. In my mother's name, Anjani Mashelkar, I have created what is called as an Anjani Mashelkar Inclusive Innovation Award. This is the fourth year of the award. It's a small award, one lakh. Every year it is given on 17th of November. What is this award for? It is for inclusive innovation, not exclusive. 
something that works only for the top of the pyramid. It has to work for the base of the economic pyramid. And that award is not given for the best practice. It is given for the next practice. People who are able to think beyond and create something. Year before last, it was won by a 28-year-old boy, Mishkini Ingawale. What did he do? He asked a simple question. He said, I understand why people die of cancer. But I don't understand why they should die of anemia. He went to rural villages and found that the women there are reluctant to give blood. And you would know it more than I do. Because they think they are giving something precious and so on and so forth. She says, all right, I'll find hemoglobin level without taking blood from them. Now, that's a disruptive innovation. How do you do that? That means it has to be something which is non-invasive. You put something around the finger and you find out what is your hemoglobin. So he immediately Googled and found that it was never achieved by anyone. He said, great, I'll do that. That's the beauty of the young, by the way. I always define an innovator is one who does not know it cannot be done. Most of us oldies think that it cannot be done, not the young people. That is our hope. That's what you say in the book also. They don't know it cannot be done. He said, I will do it. And then he said, why should it cost 150 rupees? Why not 10 rupees? 10 rupees, huh? not 10% reduction or 15% reduction. 15-fold reduction. That is affordable. Now, in order to achieve that, you had to use high technology, photoplethysmography, photospectrometry, a very advanced software for photon scattering. And then he created what is called as a touch HB, where you just put it around your finger and you know what is your hemoglobin. The award was given at the hands of Anu Aga in Pune. And I still remember his coming to the dais and before receiving the award, just putting it across her finger and said, 12.7, take care. You can imagine what it means for, for rural India, for example. So many women die of anemia, all right? And we never do uh, 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 diagnosis at an extensive level and how cheap and how easy it becomes to do that. It is transformative. But this was not Jugaad. Through Jugaad, he could not have achieved it. And uh, Rajat, just now you mentioned that in my private conversations, I mentioned to you about Jugaad. I've done it on public platforms. I just don't like the word Jugaad. Jugaad is getting less for less, for lesser people. I'm a believer in getting more from less, for more and more people. Jugaad is getting it done somehow. All right? That is not the culture. Because that, that's India for you, isn't it? When the traffic light says red, we still run. Because we know we can take that chance, the car is far away, and so on and so forth. That attitude won't do, somehow or the other. And we must go for what I like to call as affordable excellence. That is getting more from less, not less from less. And if you get more from less, you get it for more and more people. Because then it becomes affordable excellence. And you will find in Anil's book, and we had no conversation on this, by the way, the same thoughts getting expressed. And you have demonstrated how you can do it. You know, when you start thinking about an advanced material used in space for a rural application, you are talking about affordable excellence because you are trying to bring excellence, but at the same time, for a rural application, it has to be affordable. The book is remarkable for this. Nari as an institution, by the way, I must say, I had visited it long, long time ago with Dr. B.D. Tilak, by the way. And you talked about the roads. Yes, I remember those roads at that time. And in fact, I must also tell you what happened. In between, we had a puncture. And Dr. Tilak, as you know, had a heart condition. I still remember he jumping out and trying to sort of uh, fix the field. So those were the days, and I can well understand your Fulton, Pune, Pune, Fulton uh, sort of travels. And Nari, of course, uh, you know, is a, is a, is a, is a great, great uh, uh, sort of institution. And therefore, operating from there and making all these uh, things happen, sharing those experiences. You know, everything that you describe, 
like you talked about sorghum. Yes, you were the first ones. Solar distillation that you talked about, you were the first one to uh, sort of uh, talk about those um, uh, concepts. There are many, many innovative uh, 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 solutions that you have provided, whether it is uh, uh, the Nuri Lantern, uh, whether it is the Janta Cooker, whether it is the, not only the alcohol store, but alcohol land store that you talk about. I think there are brilliant examples on what can be done. I mean, uh, land store, for example. Of course, then you moved on to kerosene for a very valid reason. I mean, you can do cooking and lighting at the same time. I mean, it's a, it's a remarkable uh, sort of achievement. Where the challenge is, as you very rightly point out in the book, is uh, reaching scale. Such a wonderful breakthrough. Why it cannot be replicated all over India? See, at the end of the day, what is innovation? Innovation is a successful exploitation of a new idea in the field or the market. Each of those words are very important. New idea. Well, it could be new to the institution, new to the nation. Doesn't matter. But it's new and novel. Exploitation. Exploitation not in a bad way. It's actual use. It is idea, novel idea in practice. Novel idea in action. If it is not in action, then it is not innovation. Otherwise, it is invention. It remains in the laboratory. But the key word is successful. And what does success comprise? Success comprises three things. Speed, scale, and sustainability. I repeat, speed, scale, and sustainability. Speed. If you don't do it with speed, your competitors will take over. And in India, you will find that many things take years. Even to get a policy implemented would take years. That doesn't help, isn't it? Take an example. You, uh, Rajat, uh, referred to mobile, right? Right. About 15 years ago, we had 10 million mobiles. Today, we talk about 900 million mobiles. And they're not just with you and me. They're with the rickshaw puller and a farmer and a, a vegetable vendor. How did that happen? Innovation. But three levels of innovation. And why I want to elaborate this point is with regard to your concern in this book about things not having moved forward. You did great technological innovations, but there were other parts of the innovations that were missing, which were not your responsibility. They were responsibility of the government and of the ecosystem. Because if they are not in place, you can't have them move. For example, mobile. What were the innovations? The first and the foremost was public policy innovation. That will not go for extra cop core lines, land lines, voice over internet, voice over mobile. Right? And huge deregulation, if you remember. Supposing that was done, but the handset was still $250, it would not have worked. They came down to 25 isn't it? How did they come down to 25 Not credit to India. Nokia's and Ericsson's of this world saw the market here, and they were the ones who built it. But supposing they were $25, and still the phone calls were 10 cent per minute, 8 cent per minute. Would it have worked? No. You know, on the other day, I was moving from Pune to Bombay, and I, uh, my car stopped at a traffic light, and I saw two people who were wanting to cross. One was a very rich lady. Goggle, lipstick, hairdo, great dress, purse, and so on. And next to her, was a girl from the slum, six or seven year old, tattered clothes. Nothing common between them. Income inequality huge, and yet access equality. Both of them were on their mobiles. How did that happen? Now her father's income must be two dollars per day, isn't it? That is 200 cent. 10 cent per minute, 20 minute call, and day's earning would have gone. But no, in India, they become a fraction of a cent per minute. How did they happen? Business model innovation. 
those of you who are interested can read the paper by me and uh, C.K. Prahlad. That was unfortunately his last paper in Harvard Business Review, July, August 2010. It is called Innovation's Holy Grail, Getting More from Less for More. This paper now is ranked as among the top 10 must-read innovation papers, by the way, where we describe how India, uh, when challenged with scarcity on one hand and aspiration on the other, actually created new inclusive innovations. And that is, that is a point for discussion all around the world uh, uh, today. So therefore, moving it from 10 cents per minute to a fraction of a cent per minute was the critical thing. Now just imagine, if policy level innovation was there, was not there, would anything have happened? No, would we still struggling with the landlines? If the technological innovation was not there, would anything would have happened? No, it had to be cheap. And if business model innovation was not there, would it? No, it would have been unaffordable. Combination of all these three made it possible. And therefore, going back to your book, that is the missing part. The missing part is that a technological innovation, whether it was land stove, the that, et cetera, et cetera, had to be backed up by other innovations, including business model, including government policy. You talk repeatedly in the book about alcohol and the difficulty of getting alcohol, right? You repeatedly talk about kerosene and availability of kerosene. That is all government policy at the end. If that policy level innovation is not there, no matter what innovation you do, it just doesn't work. And therefore, I always say that India, when it talks about Indian decade of innovation, 2010-20, right? This is India's decade of innovation. It should not be looked at in isolation on what, let's say, CDAC does, or what your institute does, or I would say our institute does. But it depends upon the ecosystem. And it is only in that ecosystem that finally those results will be basically uh, achieved. There are lots of lessons to learn. You know, you must read his last chapter with regard to his dream from rural India. Because here is a PhD from Florida who comes and goes straight into the rural area. And half his age now, he spends in that rural India. So it is not coming from shelters of this world who lived in the comfort of Pune, right? National Chemical Laboratory or CSIR. It comes from somebody who has lived in a village. And you should see what he actually says. It will touch your heart. The last point I want to make is that you say very rightly, that the best minds in India must think about the rural challenges. I totally agree with you. Now, there are a number of ways of actually doing it. ACSIR, many of you must have heard about. It is Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research. What is it? As you know, CSI labs, there are PhDs who are working, like, for example, NCL, National Chemical Laboratory. It produces uh, hundreds of PhDs every year. So there are 40 labs. They all produce uh, PhDs. For granting PhD to them, previously it was the Pune University, which will give them the PhD, etc. Now an academy has been created, and by special act of the parliament, it has been given a university status. And the prime minister, in his wisdom, appointed me as the chancellor of this university. So I'm currently the chancellor of ACSR. We have close to two and a half thousand PhD students working, by the way, all across. And this will please you, Anil. You know what we have done? When they spend three to four years, out of that, two months, they will go to villages. They will stay there. They will solve a problem, provide a technological or non-technological solution to it, and there is a credit attached to it. I don't see any reason why other labs cannot do it. Uh, um, um, other universities cannot basically do it. I think when you want, you can do it. Your heart has to be in the right place. Action. That's what is required. It's the question of our thinking also. Right? Top papers in peer reviewed journals, if you don't have, you won't get promotion in IIT Kanpur, for example. But in my affordable excellence lecture in IIT Bombay, I gave the example. I gave the lecture on 9 August. On 6 August, I saw a paper in PNAS, Proceedings of National Academy of Science, US, which is among the top three or four top most journals in the world. A paper by George Whiteside from Harvard University, which talks about a $25, you know, 
sensor that has been created, multi-purpose, incredible, but using cutting-edge science. And that science is such, it is so powerful that it has found a place in PNS. So the excellence part of it, all right, gets recognized as a top scientific contributions in a journal, and the affordable part of it is one which is going to transform the world. You can just see when its application comes up. George Whitesides is uh, a very close friend of mine, and I have seen that. Uh, I spend uh, every October in Harvard University as a visiting professor. Uh, he is one of the co-workers that I work with. This year, I have not. I have decided not to go because of several other commitments, including this Swachh Bharat committee that has been constituted under my chairmanship. So I couldn't go. But every year I go, and I find, for example, I spend a day in his laboratory where all his students make presentations, and you can see a Harvard University professor looking at, this is not just one example of affordable excellence. Everywhere he's trying to see how this can be. For example, he has developed paper-based diagnostics. Paper-based, by the way, by using printing technology. All right? So you take a paper, use... Uh, uh, for, for, for example, very advanced uh, uh, technology create uh, uh, hydrophobic, hydrophilic cha uh, channels uh, uh, on the paper, drop of blood that is dropped goes to the right area, colorimetry and so on and so forth. You know how cheap it is? Your liver test, this will do in two cents but using cutting-edge science, by the way. These papers have appeared in Nature and Anguante Kimi. Therefore, coming back to the point that you have repeatedly said here, and you have been inspiring people going around and talking, continue to do that in the institutions, because out of 100, if there are five people whose heart you will touch, I think that would be fantastic, because those five people will touch another five people's heart, and then each one of them will touch another five people's heart. We have to continue to do that, but I think what I'm saying is that it requires that cultural shift. It is not something that the central government says you do it and you do it. As I said, it's a compassion. It comes from uh, basically uh, within. Uh, finally, let me just uh, recall something uh, because your book cannot be looked at just in isolation as something to do with rural technology and so on and so forth. It has a far bigger purpose. A couple of years ago, the Cambridge University had invited me to give the first Judge Business School's uh, BP Innovation Lecture. That was in the evening. And in the morning, the same day, Ratan Tata was given an honorary doctorate by uh, Cambridge University. And in the evening, we had a dinner in his honor, in Ratan Tata's honor. And I remember the director of Cavendish Laboratory was sitting next to me. Cavendish is a great laboratory, as you know. It's a single laboratory which has won the maximum Nobel Prizes in the history. And we were talking about science and other things. And suddenly, he did something which was very unusual. He pointed towards uh, Ratan Tata, who was sitting next to uh, Lord Martin Riz, the president of Royal Society. And he said, do you look at that man, that is Ratan Tata, and do you realize that he the number one employer of British in Britain? Can you just imagine hmm, a country which ruled over us, Britain, for so long, an Indian become their biggest employer in Britain? I would have never thought that I would see that day, basically. So I was very proud. And then after half an hour or so, when we finished our meal and we were having a cup of coffee, uh, he burst that. Unintentionally, it was an unintended consequence of what he, what he did. Where he just turned to me and said, uh, yeah, but Dr. Mashelkar, I want to ask you something. Why is it that some Indians, and pointing again towards Radhan Tata, are doing well? When will India do well? Think about it. The gentleman is asking me, some Indians are doing well, 
like all of us, when will India do well? India do well when rural India will do well. And this book is very passionate about that rural India. So there is a greater significance of your book, not just limited. So all that one can do is on behalf of the society, uh, we thank you for what you are, what you have been, what you continue to be, and for being what you are. Thank you very much, and for being what you have done. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring thought. Now I request uh, Dr. Anil Rajwanshi to present the vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Mashalkar. What a lovely and what an inspiring talk it was. What I have written, etc., is something else, but when you listen to him, it's always inspiring, and I'm sure that I'll try to add something to that in my next book. I have another pleasant task of proposing word of thanks. Dr. Rajat Muna has already taken the thunder, but I'll still like to do that because it was really a great help from CDAC. You took me as a family member, and I'm really grateful to CDAC and to Rajat for that. And especially, I would like to thank Dr. Sandeep Shrivastava and Vinayak Gambhir, who is not here, for the team and the team for their excellent arrangements this was really wonderful. I couldn't have achieved, I couldn't have asked for more than that. I would like to thank Mr. Chandrakant and his team for formatting the ebook. I have been really bothering him. He had gone on a vacation and still I continued bothering him and he was very, very kind in continuously making the changes. I would like to thank Digvijay Gohen for his lovely um, uh, work, handiwork in making the design for the uh, cover of the book. And I really do not have any words, enough words to thank my dear friend Rajat for the whole show. Without his encouragement and help, this function would not have been possible. And a really very, very special thanks to Dr. Marshalkar for taking, you know, he, I have always asked him what is the secret of his energy. He travels all over the world. He comes fresh with a lot of ideas. He just came back yesterday come from United States and look at this freshness, look at his ideas, and I wish if he can teach me, then maybe I can do the same type of work that we have, we have been doing for longer time. And I wish you all a very happy Diwali, and now I, may I request you to please join us for the tea. Thank you very much. <laughs>